get in shape or to perform at your best physically. Maybe you wanted to play a sport, maybe you wanted to run, maybe you wanted to lift, maybe you just wanted to get skinny and look good, be in good shape, and I bet you picked an activity, and I bet you dedicated a lot of time to it. Have any of you have ever had the experience where you plateaued? You could not lose another pound. You could not run any faster. You could not lift any more weight. Did that happen to you before? No. And then what do you do? Like a dummy with your head up against the wall, you just keep trying to run faster. You keep failing, you feel bad. Or you keep trying to lift that heavy weight, and then you hurt yourself, and you feel dumb, and you should, because that's a dumb thing to do. But what's a smart thing to do? Smart people take a little break, and they cross-train, right? So if you're a tennis player, and you want to have a better game, maybe you start doing something different. Maybe you start running. Maybe you start doing different kind of cardio, or weight, or maybe you add resistance training. Maybe this is what you do. Well, not me, but maybe this is what you do. <laughs> maybe you run. Right? And if you're a runner and it's not working out for you, this is running hat, and it's not working out for you, then you do something else, right? That's what cross training is good for. It retrains your body, it gives you a different approach. When your body says no, you find a different way to get it to say yes. Right? When your body says no, you figure out a different way to get it to say yes. Well, I met a guy yesterday who said, oh, me and I is great. I got this really great referral. It was kind of a good person for me to meet. That person was so good, they walked me all through the building. It's going to be a huge account. Walking out through the building, found me a person who could find me the person who could really say yes to my deal. He got the person's name, he got the person's phone number, someone actually picked up the phone while the guy was right there and said, hey, can you meet up with this guy? And the contact said, no, I can't. So, our BNI colleague from another chapter, he went home, you know, and licked his wounds, and a few weeks later, he called the guy and left a voicemail. No response. A few weeks later, he called the guy, he left a voicemail. No response. Scott, if you've heard this one before, a few weeks later, he called the guy and left a voicemail, got no response. You know what this guy does for a living? He does printing and promotional materials. So let me ask you, what would you have advised that guy to do? Call him a voicemail? No. My first thought was, did you mail him anything? Did you send an email? Did you call someone else? Did you call your other BNI contact to see if maybe they could get you a little closer again? Did you find another way to say yes, to get that person to say yes? And the guy said, am I not even kidding? The guy said, that never even occurred to me. So what I would like to ask you today, I bet the point is not to throw that guy under the bus. The point is to, is to show how often we don't cross-train ourselves. We have a variety of ways to get more <coughs> prospects. And, and turn them into clients, don't we? We've got the phone, we've got email, we've got snail mail, we've got people. So your action item for this week is to think about a client with whom you need to do some cross-training on yourself. Someone who said no, or I would rather say someone who's not yet said yes, and figure out a different way to get in there. If you've been calling, email them. If you've been emailing, snail mail. If you've been snail mailing, call them. If you, right? If you've been relying on other people, get in there yourself and go over to that client and see if you can get them to say yes. Because there's always a different way to get a person to say yes. That's your action item.